Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 16. Today, we are going to smash some continents together, but first, as always, some follow up. I noticed in editing the last video that this section of accreted terrain here is just miles too big. And it just so happens I also got an email this week from a chap called Carter. Hi, Carter, who left a link to a bunch of papers describing how much accreted terrain one would expect at a subduction zone. The short and sweet of it is that you can estimate this by taking the length of the island arc, multiplying it by its age and dividing by two to get how many square kilometers of terrain should be added. So let's do that here, right? So S on the keyboard, and I'm gonna draw a line along here. We'll say that's the extent of the island arc there. So that's what's that, it's 530 kilometers. Okay, hit F on the keyboard, select the island arc, it formed at 950, it is currently 650, so it is 300 million years old. So we do 530 times 300, and then divide that by two. We find that the amount of created terrain should be about 80,000 square kilometers. So again, if we hit S on the keyboard, or if we hit F on the keyboard, select our feature, hit S, we see that the area we got here is about a quarter of a million, so like miles too big. I'm gonna move around some vertices, get it more into what's expected. Yeah, so hitting S on the keyboard, I see an area here of about 84,000 square kilometers. That's good enough for me. And I checked off screen, this chap here is actually pretty decent. So that's the first item follow-up. The second item follow-up is I forgot to add island arcs along here, and I forgot to extend my subduction zone down to the mid-ocean ridge. So I'm just going to real quickly do that. And um, I will see you in two seconds. All right, done, let's get colliding. So as mentioned in the previous video, collisions are complicated things. So we'll want to slow down our time step here from our usual 50 million years to about 10 million years. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly save everything. I'm gonna skip forward 10 million years to 640, and I'm gonna move these two into collision. Now what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for, see the OG coastlines here, the original coastline of our continents? I'm looking for these to overlap. And at that point, I'm gonna say that the collision has happened. So let's do that. F on the keyboard, select a continent, P, highlight children, O, enable pole, and let's get moving. Okay, so we can see after 10 million years, the overlap hasn't happened. So what I'm gonna do is just save a little bit of time. I'm gonna hit Control or Command M, and I am going to go to my rotation file, and I'm gonna reload it. So this snaps it back into where it was at the start. And this time, I'm gonna go for another 10 million years, and I'm pretty confident they'll collide if we go from 650 to 630. So let's, again, do that. And again, making sure to check my flow lines to make sure no adjacent flow lines are overlapping. All right, flow lines look good. And we have our original coastlines overlapping now. Great. So we're going to deal with the fallout of that in one moment. I'm just going to move all the other continents around. Now, important point here is that you'll notice that I've basically neglected these two little continents. Like in reality, I should have been extending the subduction zones up as I go, adding island arcs, etc. But they have served their purpose. They were there to demonstrate how to split apart microcontinents and co moving plates. So basically, I've just forgotten about these now. They've done their thing. They're just going to keep moving on until the end of the simulation. Nothing will be added to them, just for the sake of like simplicity. Cool. 
Cool. So, obviously, this is an unphysical situation. Consonants don't overlap. IRL. What would actually occur as these consonants come into contact is that the crustal material here will deform and compress and buckle. So to account for this, we are going to copy the geometry of our consonants and we're going to deform them along this collisional boundary such that we get rid of the overlap. All right. So we're going to hit F on the keyboard. Oh, and what I'll suggest here is going forward 0.01 million years. So in this case, it's 629.99 because we're going to set a bunch of stuff to disappear at 6.30, so we'll see it disappear because we're just beyond that. It'll help clean up this mess. So, let's select the continent, copy geometry to digitize tool, hit I on the keyboard, or come over here to insert vertex, and we're going to insert just a bunch of points along this boundary here. All right, and as these were coming together and everything was squishing, we can expect some of the contents of this to get, like, squished out the side. So let's buckle it out the sides a little bit something like that and then let's run a zigzaggedy line down sort of the center of the overlap and then again we'll squish it out here to show the deformation something like that okay hit g on the keyboard to bring it to polygon mode then go to create feature this is continental crust it is going to begin life at this collision time. So plate ID of 100 here, first of all, because it's attached to the blue craton. Begin life at the collision time, 6.30. And we're going to call this continent A. Because it is continent A, just squished and deformed. Next, next, and then we'll stick it in the continents folder and go create. Then we're going to hit F on the keyboard, highlight our original continent, go to edit feature, command or control E, and then we're going to set this to disappear at that exact moment at 6.30. And because we are a little bit ahead of 6.30, we can see it disappear here. All right, I'm gonna repeat this process for the second continent. Cool, so now we have this outline of our new continent. From here on in, it's just a bunch of cleanup really. So these subduction zones, when two continents collide, the subduction zones in between them will be shut down and disappear after a small period of time, but we don't need to worry about that. We can just set them to disappear at this instance. So to do that, we're gonna hit F on the keyboard, select a subduction zone, go over here to the split feature or hit T on the keyboard, and then just split it somewhere here, say. Hit F, select the portion that you have split that you want to disappear, go to edit feature, and then change the date change the end date to when you want it to go away. 6.30 in this case. And it disappears. So again, I'm going to do the same thing for all the other subduction zones. Okay, and while we're at it, I can foresee this now combined constant traveling that away. So there is no reason at all not to extend this subduction zone all the way across. So L on the keyboard, and we'll draw a line, something like that, create feature and make a subduction zone that begins at this current time, the time of collision. Boom. Now we have three lumps of accreted terrain. We have what was an old island arc, what was an old island arc, and what currently is an island arc. Now you can, and this is totally legitimate, you can set each of these features to disappear at this time, but what you can do to be a little bit more detailed if you so choose, is create new features along this collisional boundary that represent these chunks of accreted terrain smushed into the collision boundary. For the sake of completion, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard, I'm gonna select this guy, hit S for the measure tool. He's about 84,000 square kilometers in size. I'm gonna make a feature maybe somewhere here that's slightly less, again, to kind of hint at the compression and deformation that would have taken place. G on the keyboard and let's get drawing. S, this is about 51,000 square kilometers. Go a little bit more than that. Maybe something like, there we go, something like that. G, create feature, continental crust, plate ID, we'll give it a plate ID of 100 because this had a plate ID of 100. Begins life at 6.30, goes on to the end and I'm going to call this accreted terrain 
Mm, I'll call it 6.30 for now, but give me one moment. Next, next, I'm gonna put this into a Create a Trains and go Create. Now, this island arc here, we said it formed at 6.50, so let's change that date on the name, just to note that. And then F on the keyboard, select our old feature, edit feature, and then set its end time to the point of collision to clean it up. Done. I'm gonna do the same thing for this chap now. Brill, and again, just to stress, not at all mandatory. You could just set the features to disappear. I guess this could be useful if you wanted to like track fossils in your modern world, where they came from, etc. But again, definitely, definitely not mandatory. All right, now we got an island arc. So we're going to need to, just like before, select the island arc, clone it. So we have two copies of the island arc. Delete points away from one copy. So you're left with everything that's been accreted in one copy and the other copy is left with everything that remains in the ocean. Same procedure as previous videos. All right, once you got the copy you need to get rid of, go to edit feature, same deal as before, change the end time to the point of collision. Beautiful. Okay. So let's figure out how much terrain we need to put along that collisional boundary. S on the keyboard. That's about 800, we'll call it 900 kilometers. And then that island arc we said appeared at 650 and the collision is at 630. So it's 20 million years old. So that's 900 kilometers multiplied by 20 million divided by two is 9,000 square kilometers. So basically barely anything. But for the sake of completion, we'll, we'll mark it in. <laughs> that's, that's already 14,000. So re it really is barely any crustal material was added. There you go. Let's just have a little look-see at that. Boom. And now these boils. Okay, so notice we have some ocean overlap here. We'd like to clean that up. So just like before, select the feature you want to clean, create a copy. So you now have two copies. One copy is going to be the section you want to get rid of. You're going to change the end date. The other copy is going to be the section you want to keep. You leave that alone. And while I'm at it, actually, the same process applies to cleaning up these chunks of ocean crust. So I might just do that now because really I should have done it ages ago when they first formed, but I was too lazy. So we'll, we'll fix that in this uh, step. All right, time lapse mode engaged. Okay, all cleaned up. Now, while I was doing that, I actually recalled something that I forgot to say, which is actually really important. When continents are coming together and you're doing the overlap we had, at no point should cratons overlap because the whole point of cratons, by definition, they are chunks of the crust that have been undisturbed by tectonic forces. 
So if the overlap involves cratons, necessarily they've been disturbed, so they're not really cratons. Now, in reality, cratons can deform a little bit, but for our purposes here, just stay clear of them. They should never be involved in the overlap, period. So now that we have a single constant here, we need to tell G-plates to treat it as a single constant. So if we recall the splitting coal moving plates video, we are basically going to do the same process, but in reverse. We're going to take two independently moving plate IDs and bind them together. Now to do this, we'd want to decide upon a parent plate and a child plate, i.e. the parent plate is the one that does the moving and the child moves with it. So in keeping with how we've been doing it already, I'm going to say that the parent plate will be associated with the pink craton, so plate ID of 300, and plate ID 100 will be the child plate. It will follow pink. Blue will follow pink. Command or Control M on the keyboard, save all changes. The important thing is to save the rotation file, and I may as well just save the file proper anyways. We want to go to Reconstruction, specify anchored plate ID, Control or Command D, and then in this dialog box, we want to put in the plate ID of our parent plate. So in this case, 300. Then go Reconstruction, View Total Reconstruction Poles, and we want to do equivalent rotations relative to anchor plate, and we want to get ready to input the child plate ID, the coordinates of that in our rotation file. So that means we need to open up our rotation file. One rotation file. So in the child plate ID, so the plate ID that will follow your main plate ID, find your latest time step, which will be this line here. Above that, input a new line, same plate ID, in this case, plate ID of 100, same time, as the line below, 630, the point of collision in our simulation. And then we want to put in the coordinates of plate ID 100 at this time. So 29.5454 and so on. And then we want to hit space and input the parent plate ID. So in this instance, 300. And we'll put in a comment here that says start following C, because if I recall correctly, plate ID of 300 was Craton C, correct. All right, and while we're at it, we may as well take the coordinates and paste them into our drift correction. And very important, the conjugate plate ID here needs to be the same in your drift correction, otherwise things are going to break. And I guess while we are actually here, we may as well put in all the drift corrections. So 630, copy the coordinates for that, input it into Drift correction for plate ID 200. Okay, save the rotation file, close your text editor, go back into G plates, hit Control or Command M, and then reboot the rotation file. Reconstruction, specified anchor plate ID, and set it back to its default 000. So now, all going well, all our throw lines should be busted, which they are. Wonderful. Thanks, G plates. <laughs> But we should be able to move these two as one. So I'll select that, hit P on the keyboard, and will you look at that with children highlighted, all of this will move. So this all will move as one now. Now it's worth noting at this point that if you select the child plate ID and try to move it, it will move on its own. So you could totally do a thing where the collision starts, say, at 6.30, and they begin to move together through to say 620, but as they are moving together, the child plate ID is kind of further grinding into the parent plate. So you can kind of have a prolonged collision process if that's something you're interested in. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna say it all happens in this one time step at 630. All right, so penultimate thing here is I'm gonna delete these flow lines, set them up again and paint in some ocean crust. Again, no new information, so I'll just skip straight to it. It should look a little bit like this. Now, two things before I go. Number one, believe it or not, we now actually have covered everything you need to know about colliding land masses. We've covered what happens when an island arc collides with a continent, and now we've covered what happens when a continent collides with a continent. The, the only other structure that you may come across in full simulations is island arc colliding with island arc, but it follows the same process as this. Two island arcs come together, you overlap them, you figure out how much terrain each one of them accounts for, draw in that terrain, smash it together. That's basically it. The other thing is recall that subduction zones are the most important part of the process. At all times, we need to be like micromanaging our subduction zones. Where are they? 
what are they doing? What is feeding them? That's the key thing. Most of the time you'll have a nice mid ocean ridge that's putting out crust that's being sucked into subduction zone. Everything's nice and stable. But in this instance here, you see we have these like dangling subduction zones that are no longer being fed by a mid ocean ridge. They're kind of just stuck in this place doing nothing. That's a situation we'd want to resolve. Now there's a number of ways we could resolve this situation, uh, but I think the most logical one is that we can open up a subduction zone along the coastline of our new continent. Why? Because this crust is really old. It's, what is it, 100, 200, 300, 350 plus 20. It's 370 uh, million years old. That is super old. Natural place to put a subduction zone. And if we run a subduction zone along here, we'll have a mid-ocean ridge feeding this subduction zone, which will eventually gobble up our kind of errant subduction zones here. So I am not going to do that now for the sake of time, but I'm just going to plop in the subduction zone and we'll move it in the next video. I give it a play ID of 300. Again, now pink is our primary craton for this entire plate. So we'll tie everything to 300. Bingo. And I just want to stress that again, because it is so crucially important. Subduction zones are the key here. They always need to be fed by something. If they aren't being fed, you need to resolve the situation most of the time by making them disappear, by sucking them up into something else. All right, that is that. Next time we'll see what happens when these fellas begin to be sucked away and we're going to start putting in orogeny. Thanks to World Building Pasta. Thanks to Vanga Van Gogh. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to the patrons for supporting the show. Y'all are the best of nerds. Until next time, Edgar out.